We are live with comedian Tom Cotter. I'll tell you what, 2018 is going to be behind us by uh, midnight tonight. Scary. Thanks Good for year, joining though. me, buddy. Honored to be here. It's the you. first appearance on the Captain's Log. That's right. It's uh, it's like your inaugural uh, show. Well, you had the restraining order for years, and we just <laughs> lifted that, so I'm honored to be here. So, uh, what's more exciting? I know this just started, but obviously, being on this show compared to America's Got Talent, I must head over heels win. Clearly. Yeah. 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 Uh, it, uh, Captain Brian's, great club. We <laughs> love working there. It's a lot of fun. It is literally off the hook, and uh, I love coming down here. My in-laws are down here. That part I don't love. Let's do your phone, because we both apparently have ADD. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's do you right. have ADD? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. When we were kids, we called it hyper. Yeah. They didn't call it ADD. You have great jokes about that, too, though, I've heard on the stage, right? When I was a kid, ADD was the opposite of subtract. Hello, everybody. Tom <laughs> Cotter. Try the veal and come see me at Captain Ryan's <laughs> off the hook. <laughs> we're both sitting here. We just clearly talked about what we're going to do. And I said I wouldn't let my phone go out. But we were so lost in conversation, Brian, that I, it is. I let it go. Is it the love that you have for me or just that the ADD is way more? more important. Let's go with the former. Yeah. Let's go with the love that I have for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I like to say. I like to say that. It was the vodka that drew us off. It is. Yeah. Hey, we, everybody. Yeah. Captain Brian's vodka. Yeah, we get mm. a, a, a custom bottle for Tom Cotter. Delicious. I'll sign it, so then it's even worth less. Uh, this is my new over-the-counter antidepressant, everybody, <laughs> and it's available without a prescription. So let's see. So Tom has the, um, the updated iPhone 6. Yeah, it's wood. It's made of wood, everybody. <laughs> I got a splinter from it. <laughs> That's awesome. I feel like that, but you know, it's um, let's see. We're trying to share it on on my, on the page, and we're trying to see if we can um, do that. And and he's operating a motor vehicle. And I'm driving. While he's Look at that's this. us. That's us right there. That's frightening, everybody. That's us. That's us. We're going. We're going to share it. That's us right now. We're sharing it on Tom Cotter's page. I share. I'm a sharer. A you lot of people are share. share. You're a giver. Some people are selfish. You're <laughs> not me. You're a giver. I am. You really are. I give STDs. I give. Uh, I give people a lot of grief. Oh my goodness! That's a. This is trouble. So, um, you just got here, right? I did. And tell me, what, what do you think? Uh, well, I was in Buffalo. Oh, so you last love night. it? You're loving so it. So this is a dream come true. I went from hypothermia to heat exhaustion. And I like it. I love coming down here. This is my favorite state. I will be here eventually. And you've been kind enough to accommodate me and let me come down and pedal my punchlines in your fine venue. And I will continue to do so until you fire me. How about that? You, yeah, the firing is not... I don't see it in the near future, but I probably at some point. Yeah. You know, you're going to do something. Well, you're going to wheel me out on the stage. I'll be, you know, I'll have attendants <laughs> wiping the drool off my You chair. have in-laws here, right? I do. So where do they live? They live in Heritage Bay. The address is, no, just kidding. It's one of those gated communities yeah. where all the people inside, uh, you know, they want to be safe and secure in their little enclave. Yeah. So they live on a golf course. And, and do, that's do you do. play golf? Horribly. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, is odd because my nickname is Putz. So you'd think I'd be good, <laughs> but I'm not good. I'm the jokes just keep coming. They do, and they won't stop. They do not They can't stop. shut it off. <laughs> So, do you actually enjoy golf, or do you play because they invite you? I do a lot of golf tournaments in this business, oh, as yeah. you know. So, I so get like celebrity golf tournaments. Yeah, and they want you to not just tell jokes at the banquet. They want you to play, yeah. and it's humiliating. I did one where it was the NFL Senior Pro-Am, and I was the worst in my foursome by leaps and bounds. There was one other civilian, and his name was Schwartz, and he was the editor of Golf Digest magazine. <laughs> And he was a scratch golfer. And I literally had to pick up my ball at a few holes. Oh. And there's a gallery of fans, you know, yeah, to yeah. get the NFL players to sign stuff. And it was always humiliating because we were waiting for me the entire day. And that changed my life. I like to golf, but I literally play once every, like, five years. Yeah, I don't play a lot either. Yeah. People invest time. It's a four-hour commitment. Dude, that's a lot. Yeah. That's what I feel like. You can get more exercise playing tennis for half an hour than you can in four hours of golf. And that's I like I tennis. Say. And my friends also lie and cheat because I hang with horrible people. And so they, they lie on their scorecards and they... You know, they say, oh, yeah, that was a three when we all know it was a six. And yeah. It's just annoying. Yeah, there's no way they're getting a three. Yeah, please. It's, it's just like... guys carrying luggage doing bad math. That's what they say <laughs> golf is. And I agree. <laughs> so, uh, your lovely wife, how is she doing? 
My lovely bride is telling jokes in Boston as we speak and freezing her I was wondering off. that. I was wondering why she wasn't here because a lot of times she comes down. Yes. Uh, a lot of guys go to work uh, to get away from their wives and I bring mine with me sometimes. Because She's great though. I'm a and enough. she probably taught you all the comedy. How many jokes she has she written for you? Quite a few. Tell me the truth. We know it's, we're both a married comedy couple, yeah. and we bounce things off each other, bricks and frying pans, elbows. <laughs> uh, but we, uh, yeah, we share some material sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So who, uh, who feels like they get more laughs at the house, you or her? I may get more laughs, but they're laughing at her more. Yeah. They're laughing with me more. I'm kidding, honey. I'm kidding. No. Which, I'm sure I, I she's watching. She, she loves you so much. She she's must tuning, be tuning in. She's asleep. Yeah. Uh, but she <laughs> tunes. She, you know, we, we, I think at home we're like a normal family. Everyone thinks that we're always joking and having fun. Our kids think they're hysterical. Yeah. They're not. And so that's, Do, what that's about, about the kids? It. Do they think that you're not funny? They accuse me of doing dad jokes yeah. sometimes. You know, the dad joke. Yeah. Thing. So, uh, that's annoying. And, uh, uh, sometimes I think it's a good joke, and apparently it's a dad joke, which is humiliating when your kids heckle you. Yeah, they that's a say, bad sign. See, the kids don't realize, though, that, that you're pretty cool. And I try to tell my kids that, too, but they clearly think I'm not. No. I didn't I'm think like, my dad was cool. That's kind of cool. I'm kind of cool. Like, you know, you other cool. people think it's cool. They totally think you're cool. You're a celebrity. But the kids don't see it. I want my kids, if they're watching, we're driving and we have vodka. I mean, how cool is that? We have Captain Rice vodka. And this guy made the damn thing. And we're driving. Yeah. It's an open container. It's not really open. It's not container. open. But the I'm car drives itself. Um, yeah, it's a, this is amazing. It's great. What a ride. So I just I love this. press the little button and it does it. You know what? The automatic driving car is the drunk driver's best friend, I've decided. It's a good... That's Tesla should be... Awarded. That's the best company in the world because they're going to have yeah, that's a great automatic car. driving cars yeah. that are clean for the environment. So you get picked up at a party, you're hammered, you still get home safe, no one gets hurt, and you're not damaging the environment. And Come it on. should high five you at the end. It should. I think. Did you give up on my phone? Uh, no, you're done, dude. I did it all. Yeah. We're good. Oh. I just feel like, uh, you know, everyone's probably sleeping at 9 o'clock in the morning today. On It's a holiday, right? So no one works. It's not technically a holiday, is it? Is, I don't know. Eve? I don't think New Year's. I think New Year's Day. Maybe. I think we're the only ones that have to work though on New Year's Eve. Uh, we're doing two shows tonight. We though. are two at shows. Off the Hook Comedy Club, six o'clock. First one's at six, so yeah. you can still go to your party afterwards. But you just start off the evening with some levity and some laughter. Yeah. And then you go get hammered. Yeah. And then the second show. You got it all in one spot. You, you got, do. You get the show, you get the food, you get the celebration, the champagne. And it's, I, I have to say that it is a quality lineup. Uh, you know, we have Carl and Stacy, both very That's funny. Right. And uh, we had a great time last night. If last night's any indication, then tonight we'll just hit it out of the park, I hope. Yeah, no, I think you're going to actually have some funny jokes. I may. I got to start <laughs> writing. I got a couple hours. Uh, but, Get out of here. So how many jokes do you write a week? That's a good question. I should have asked you that. Well, uh, topical jokes, the issue with those is they have no shelf life. So I try to write evergreen stuff that I can continue to do for forever. And yeah, uh, yeah you know, every day there's something new that you're poking fun of. But right now we're coming off of Christmas. So a lot of the stuff I'm talking about is ex post facto Christmas shopping. And now we'll do some New Year stuff tonight. And Trump is always a giver yeah. in the comedy yeah. world. So we, you know, we have to talk about that. And so, yeah, there's a lot of new stuff. They, they say write what you know. And my muse right now, and I think this is true for my wife, Carrie, our kids, you know, they, they yeah. provide Absolutely. so much material for us and laughter. So I love great. that, too. It's I, I like joke with them all the time. And I really think that uh, that's good. That's a good comedy bit. Like, everybody can relate to that. The family that laughs together stays together. That's true. Yeah. I agree. So when you write, do you write it down or you just like, are like, oh, that's a good thought. I'm going to work that out. I used to carry around a pad. Yeah. It was a maxi pad. It's a long story. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. But uh, now I carry around the iPhone. So uh -huh. now, now I just dictate into it. But oh, I good. used to literally carry around pads. It was very disconcerting. You and I might be having a conversation if you were civilian. Hold on. Not I mean, right. Yeah, exactly. In the middle of a conversation, we're like, hold that thought. And then turn around and write. And that makes I people very uncomfortable. Yeah. But you, if you don't, 
then your impaired brain from the amount of things you did in college to impair your brain will kick in and you won't remember it. I and do the same thing. Uh, like if I have an idea, like a business idea or something, I'm like, that's a great idea. And I'll text it to like either myself or I'll dictate it into my notes. And people are like, dude, like we're talking. And I totally <laughs> forgot what the hell I was talking about. So I have to but write it doesn't it matter down. because now you have that nugget, exactly. that gem that's exactly. going to become this diamond one day. Yeah. And Carrie and I have Alexa in the house downstairs oh, yeah. and upstairs. And so now, in the middle of the night before, you have these epiphanies in the middle of the night. So I do. I, yeah. yeah. And it wakes we you have up. ADD. And it wakes you up in the middle of the night. And then I got to fumble around and get a pad and pencil. Now we have Alexa. So in the middle of the night. Wait, I have Alexa too. What are you doing? Tell me something good. You tell her to, uh, you say Simon Says, and she'll say exactly what you say. So you'll say, uh, Alexa, Simon Says... Uh, Tom carried around a maxi pad and then boom it'll be she'll save it for you and then the next morning she'll recite it back for you and one, you can make it one of your lists like a shopping list no way yeah and then you just wait tell me how you do it so but listen guys we're giving you all the tricks if here if you want Alexa to we do this all the time like my son Cameron will say uh, Alexa Simon says my dad is a uh, fat load and then I'll come into the room and Alexa will go, Tom Cotter is a fat load or something. Oh, okay. So, so <laughs> she'll, she'll recite that back. That's how you get her to be but a parrot. But when do you but get then you make to... lists. You say, add uh, Alexa, add uh, the new joke about the astronaut to my uh, joke list. Because you have different lists in there you can add. We have the oh. shopping list and the other list. And she'll add it. She'll say, I've added the astronaut joke to your Tom Cotter list. And so the next morning, so you didn't forget it, you say... Uh, Tell me the yeah, the, or you go to your phone and you can read the list on, right on your phone. Okay, you through the app. Alexa app, and then uh, that way I don't forget the joke, and I'm not fumbling around. I can't tell you how many times I fumbled around in the middle of the night in the dark for a pen and paper, yeah. knocking beverages over, scaring the cat and the dog. So this is much easier. It's technology. And then did, what will she be like? Ugh, oh, this guy's writing another joke. Yeah, well, she'll say, "Tom, that's not funny. You suck." <laughs> You should be a plumber. <laughs> Get a new yeah. occupation. And yeah. I don't need that. I already have a wife to give me that. Right. I don't need two women giving me crap in my bedroom, pointing so, and laughing. So the, the good thing is is that you guys are doing the same occupation. So yes. will she do that as well? Uh, well, it's or new to she... her. It's new to her. That's not her. First of all, she doesn't have these epiphanies at night like I do. Yeah. I'm weird. I wake I do up the and same. it's part of a dream or something. Yep. And someone told me a long time ago, write it down and you'll never forget it because yep. your brain's still in sleep mode. You're in beta or whatever. Yeah. So write it down, which I do. And the next morning, sometimes I'll look at it and say, I don't even know why I took the time to write that down. That's moronic. But most of the time I'll say, wow, that is the little That's acorn that will become the mighty oak tree of a comedy bit one day or it may not even be comedy related it'll be something like oh I have to you know I wrote a speech for my prep school I had to give the commencement speech and I woke up in the middle of the night one night and I had all these memories flooding into my head about when I was at school yeah so those all came out on that path and they wow. were part of the speech and that was in the middle of the night middle of the night I do the same thing it's so weird but normally um, I would annoy the person I was with <laughs> by doing that. <laughs> well, that assumes you're with someone in bed, which Correct. is kind of creepy. Yes. Uh, the On America's Got Talent, I did a thing called Comedy on Demand. Right, where, I love that one. Uh, yeah, and that was an epiphany. I was at the Nantucket Comedy Festival with my wife living in someone's attic uh, apartment in their house. And I at 5 in the morning, which is the middle of the night for comedians, right. I had that epiphany. And I woke her up, and she was not pleased. And I said, I'm thinking about this. And then I threw it past all the comedians at the Nantucket Comedy Festival. And they're like, well, some of them were like, you're an idiot. But others said, yeah, go ahead and do it. And it ended up being a really good thing on the show for me. So That yeah, was great. Yeah, that, I actually played that clip uh, advertising your little New Year's Eve thing. And your that's gig. the name of my company is Comedy on Demand because of that epiphany. Is that it? Had, yeah. So before that, you didn't have a company? You just put the money in your pocket? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, is the IRS watching? No, nobody uh, uh, could ever see this. Uh, 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 before that, you know, I'm a giggle whore. I, yeah. You know, I yeah, made yeah. what I could. And, sure. Uh, yeah. It, uh, well, yeah. Obviously, AGT changed things dramatically did, right? and, uh, and it helped us out a lot. So, did that help the career getting booked at new venues, bigger venues, or just more often? All of the above. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it, prime time is a beast. We all do the late night shows. Everybody right. does those, but that's 
so watered down now. It was so great much. when it was just Johnny Carson. Then you were anointed and it was great. But now there's like 11 of them. And so, and it's great. We love doing them, but that's a $5 million demographic, 5 million people demographic usually. Right. In that range. Our worst on AGT was a rerun and it was like 17 million. Wow. Uh, you know, for the live shows, it's significantly more than that. Yeah. So it's just more eyeballs on you, which means more interest and more and f- viewership. And I think like families sit down and watch it, right? So yeah. like, I think you're, everyone's more in tune. Sometimes when you're watching those late shows, you're, you're on your phone, you're playing around. You're not just like focused because it's not really a competition. You don't have to see who's going to win. You're just watching and you don't have to pay attention as much. That's true. I think that everyone really tunes in. I'd love to sit there and kind of say who's going to win. And what we, were, we were watching that show before I ever considered being on it. We, yeah. You know, as a family. We loved that show. It's a, it's, it harkens back to vaudeville. It's a talent show. It is, and right. We had that growing up regionally in New England. And I remember uh, we had Star Search before that. There, you know, these, these things keep reincarnating themselves. But right now, the Got Talent thing is huge. And next week, self-promotion hey. uh, begins the champion season, which is AGT Champions. It's 13 seasons in the United States. And then Britain's Got, ta- uh, got Talent. Uh, France has got talent. Germany's got talent. Wow. So it's 50 acts from all over the world. It starts January 7th. and uh, I imagine you're telling everyone because you're going to be on. I am going to be on. See that? Yes. So, I knew. I was uh, psychic. Yeah. Uh, I already know because we pre-recorded it. I know what happens. I could tell you, but then I'd have to smash you over the head with yes. Captain Brian's vodka. Yeah, don't everybody. do that. No. Wait. So how many? How much do they record? Uh, <clears throat> people do want to know that. They f- they recorded it right after the end of the season, so the season ended in December. I'm sorry, in September, and they didn't, you know, for cheap production. They they already had the set made up. They right. already had the judges on site. Yeah. So they just flew 50 acts, and I was very lucky to be one of them okay. into um, Pasadena in California, and we shot the entire season in one week. So really, yeah, so, every night, 15 acts per night. So and wait, then, it's judge voting then because because the, America yeah, it's a vote. little it's not the same as America's Got Talent normally okay. is because AGT's live and right when it goes live you can't mess with live it you know live is live there's a seven second delay but that's it uh, so the, all they can do is cover it if you swear or something yeah. however this is pre recorded like Last Comic Standing was and whenever you pre record something you can manipulate things in editing yeah. so. Therein lies the dilemma. We don't know how they're going to edit us until it airs. So you just don't know how it all... Uh, I'm always a little suspicious when you're pre-recorded for something. I prefer live because yeah. then they can't manipulate it. On Last Comic Standing, uh, they literally put the sound of crickets behind a few friends of mine who were on that show, which <laughs> clearly there were no crickets in the comedy right, club. Obviously. But they were, you know, they, that's yeah. what they can do in editing yeah and they also made other people look like heroes when we were there for the recording and like that guy bombed how do they right where, yeah. where's this applause coming from absolutely so, uh and so that's why i'm always suspicious of that stuff i understand that yeah. i understand that totally because you can change like even in the even in the crowd if you have 200 people that sit there on their hands you could tell the funniest jokes and they're gonna bomb Yes. You could tell the jokes to 50 people that are hysterically laughing, and it's and it's like you're freaking the next messiah. Yes, exactly. And they did that to Dan Natterman on that show, uh, Last Comic Standing, when I was there. Uh, he got his huge standing ovation on the show, because I was in the audience live watching it. And then when it aired on TV, they never showed it, and they eliminated him from the show. What? And Yeah. And people, it was on the cover of Entertainment Weekly magazine. It said, when is reality, not reality? And the judges all walked out. The judges were Drew Carey, Anthony Clark, and Brett Butler. And they all went to the media afterwards and said, this show is BS. They called it Last Client Standing because it was they, some of them were managed by the uh, the producers of the show. Okay, it was a big scandal. Yeah, but uh, I didn't they know turned that. that around. Oh yeah, it's a lot of drama from the past. Yeah, reality is rarely reality. That's interesting. How the hell did I miss that? Uh, I'm here to put your finger on. This the is pulse what you learn on the captain's log. It's amazing. Oh yeah, the last episode. By the way, this is season one. It took 13 years to finish. I'm going to season two now. I like it. Nice. You know, it was a good run. Well, they won 13 episodes in the can. That's what yeah, they say. Yeah, yeah. I had 100, I think we did 189 episodes uh, in 13 years. Why shouldn't I, why didn't I just do, and 100 of those came in the past like nine months. I should have done this That means you're nonstop. speeding up. That's good. This yeah. Is, yeah, you're taking yeah, yeah. off. Well, it's clearly now a, a huge hit. Yeah. I'm going after AGT numbers. 
I'm going to go for the, um, this is physical comedy, everybody. We're going to well, go for physical comedy. <laughs> I didn't because know you brought these. This is beautiful. Yeah, come, come into the camera. That's a lovely one. Oh, you can move That's them. That's a skill that a lot of people you don't have. You can move them. I love my country, and... You have some movement oh, that's there, just, that's, son. Those are just the uh, non-pornographic movements that I yeah, can do. Yeah, yeah, no one others, knows. But, yeah. I'm telling you right now. I have a is... lot of cool... Yeah, watch this, everybody. They didn't yeah. know that America's uh, got talent. Uh, uh, and Tom Cotter's got uh, talent. I don't know what else you want, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> those dogs should have ticked the flags. The oh. dogs could have got the flags. You don't want... I didn't... You had to bring up the dogs. I, you I was, love that. I was living fine without you talking love about that. the dogs. All right. Ugh. Dogs. <laughs> Well, guys, tune in. First of all, if you don't have tickets, there's a few left. It's almost sold out. Tonight, there's two shows, 6 and 9 o'clock. And that's offthehookcomedy.com. If you want to see Tom Cotter, we'll have dinner. We'll have show. We'll have champagne toast. And we're going to drop the ball. Champagne toast. So is that toast? It comes out of the toast. Do you butter yes. it and you pour champagne on it? Absolutely. We Love dip that. it. We sog, make that. soggy toast with the champagne. Yeah. Yeah. Extra Perfect. bubbles. Love it. <laughs> Never drink anything with the word pain already in it, everybody. But do come see us. We have two shows tonight. They'll both be fun. I promise you will laugh. We'll follow you home and tickle you if we have to. That's our guarantee. And also, the other two comics in the lineup are really good. They're the they're the meat of the order. I'm just the uh, I'm, I'm the low life on the bottom of the rung. How can they guys. find you on social media? Get plugged at so we can get to you. All right. So uh, 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 I'm on TomCotter.com. TomCotter.com is my website. But I'm also at TomCotterComic. And that's Instagram and, uh, and Facebook Twitter. Facebook and, and yeah. Twitter. So yeah, just remember TwitFace. Think of me and follow me. Please that's follow right. me. Follow me into the parking lot. And Happy New me. Year, guys. Happy New Year from uh, Captain Brian. That's me. From Tom Carter. That's him. And the Captain's Log. We're out. And uh, we'll see you in 2019. Season 2's kicking off. Have a great year, everybody. Take care. Oh, download the damn podcast. And by the way, I know you're watching it. So rate me. And uh, yeah, give me like a, a some kind of ratings. Just so I know you're alive out there. And rate me as well. And if you don't like me, that's fine. If you if you do like me, that's even better. If you don't like me, at least pronounce my name right. Ray Romano. <laughs>